heard about the Schaefer Commission, the, the commission appointed by President Nixon, the, the Governor Schaefer of Pennsylvania, that landed up overthrowing what Nixon expected from a Republican governor and coming out with a path-breaking report about what a good drug policy would be. About the same time in Canada, there was a lawyer at law school dean named Gerald Ledet, who did a similar report with equal, if not even farther reaching conclusions that really provided an international model for independent commissions in thinking and dealing with drugs. It's worth <coughs> noting, it's worth noting that this did not stop him from a decade later being appointed to the Supreme Court of Canada. The Liddell Award is named after him. We're going to have today, and it happens only by coincidence, an award named after a Canadian is being given by a Canadian to a Canadian. I think maybe the first time. I'm asking Don McPherson and Eugene Moskipel to come up to present this award to Libby Davies. Don McPherson. Sam saw and heard before, the guy who's making it happen, the four pillars approach. Eugene Oscar has been directing the Canadian Foundation on Drug Policy since its inception. These two guys are pivotal to reforming Canada. Okay, the less I say, the more Libby gets to say, okay? I just want to say that I don't know if the DPA had any idea that Libby is a legend in Vancouver. She's a legend in Canada. She was a city, she was a community activist in the downtown east side for many, many, many years. She's a legend in the downtown east side. She was on our city council for many, many, many years. I believe was our mayor Sullivan. Were you on council? No, Sullivan? he came just after me. He came just after. So, yeah. so I mean imagine being here with the mayor and the, and, the, and my MP from Vancouver East. Uh, and she has been a member of parliament for many, many years. And so she is an absolute legend. It is an absolute honor to be here, uh, come down from Canada, and uh, to be just part of uh, honoring Libby's hard work in this area. And I'm going to give it over to Eugene right now. Thank you. There's something that, that characterizes Room. It's, I believe it's a fundamental sense of, of decency, um, and Libby epitomizes that sense of decency. Uh, she's worked as a social activist for over 30 years. Um, she has a, a sense of kindness, a sense of caring about human beings that I wish we could bring to other politicians in our country. Um, I've known Libby almost since she was uh, an MP when she first became an MP 10 years ago, and it's, I've been delighted to watch her bring some dignity to the Canadian Parliament, bring some honesty, and bring some real heart to the, the movement for drug policy reform. Libby? were dying at an alarming rate from drug overdoses and it was the single most important issue in my federal riding at Vancouver East. I was told by many, many people, including my allies, that I would never, ever get re-elected for speaking out against the war on drugs. And I'm now being uh, re-elected, I think it's uh, three times or four times, I can't remember. But when I, when I took this issue on, like many people, I came to understand that when you take it on, you take on the whole of society. You take on all of the class issues, the race issues, the prejudices, all of the vested interests. And more than anything, I want elected representatives to stand up and speak the truth about the war on drugs. I really do. <laughs> people can just bring the evidence forward and speak to the evidence and not the rhetoric and not the ideology, we would be so much further ahead. And so to me, that's really important to say that elected representatives can stand up and speak the truth 
and they will be re-elected, and they will have public support. And so I hope that will happen more and more, both in Canada, where things are actually now getting pretty bad, and we're fighting a new bill that will bring in minimum mandatory sentences for drug crimes. So we have big battles in Canada, and, and I know that this is a big issue in the United States as well. The last thing I want to say is that as an elected representative, I, I work for my constituents, and, and some of those constituents are drug users, and they're people who are really hurt. And, and because they have the courage to stand up and speak out and speak the truth, they gave me the courage to do that. And so I want to say for all of the folks at the Vancouver Area Network of Drug Users, and I think many of you know Bandu, it's just an outstanding group. They changed the debate in our community when they spoke out and they were no longer demonized and vilified as bad people and bad citizens, and they, they had that courage. Um, I think it gave all, us, all of us the courage. So, so we're here, I feel a great sense of unity here. It's been an outstanding conference, and so I'm going home feeling a great sense of strength and empowerment that we will continue this struggle until we can, because it is about human rights, until we've won those rights for all people who have been killed and maimed by this horrible, horrible war on drugs. So thank you very much.